So like there are just like random chairs in the world who like if you if you like cut them open, like you would find like Jack White poetry and it is my ultimate dream to cut open a chair and find Jack White poetry in it. Hey, I'm Olivia Rodrigo and right now I'm doing an episode of Fanning Out. I am a huge White Stripes fan, so today we are going to put my knowledge to the test and see how big of a fan I really am. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone's like first White Stripes song they listen to is probably Seven Nation Army. Like if you're my age, like Seven Nation Army is just so iconic and like you just know it, it's just like in your blood. Um, so yeah, probably that one. <laughs> White Stripes is my all time favorite band and they have been for the past like five years. I'm obsessed with them. <sighs> my favorite song changes like based on the mood that I'm in. I love like Ball and Biscuit. I love Girl You Have No Faith in Medicine. I love Icky Thump. I love Little Room, I love like Little Bird. I love all of their songs. I like can't choose, but um, yeah. <laughs> what was Jack White's former occupation before becoming a full-time musician? So B, he was an upholsterer. I'm obsessed with this story. He says that he like used to write poetry and put it like in chairs and then upholster over it. So like there are just like random chairs in the world who like if you if you like cut them open, like you would find like Jack White poetry. And it is my ultimate dream to cut open a chair and find Jack White poetry in it. It also, sorry, just like random tidbits in my head. Um, it, uh, it's also why he loves the number three so much is because he used to upholster chairs and he was like, the essential number of legs for a chair to stand is three. And so the White Stripes is like all about the number three. So it's like guitar, drums, vocals, red, white, black. So, and he like learned that from upholstering. So he says, so yes, big part of his upbringing. <laughs> what popular TV comedy featured the White Stripes in September, 2006? Family Guy, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons, Parks and Rec. I think it's The Simpsons, right? Is that The Simpsons or Family Guy, but I think it's The Simpsons. See? <laughs> What's the name of the record store performance space and label Jack founded in March of 2009? Third Man Records, D. Um, I've never been and I literally want to go to Nashville. I think they have a uh, location in Detroit too, but I want to go to Nashville so bad just to go to this place. I think it's like one of the only places in the world you can like get into a booth and like record your voice and it can like go straight to a vinyl and you can like take the vinyl home. It's so cool. People always say it's Indie Kid Disneyland, which I like. <laughs> Besides white and black, what main color appears on nearly every White Stripes album cover? Red. B, easy one. <laughs> Which White Stripes song is famous for challenging the unfair treatment of immigrants in America? Icky Thump. Um, and apparently, like, he said that his, like, wife at the time was, like, British, and it was, like, Ecky Thump, and he always thought it was Icky Thump, so it was, like, something that he, like, heard wrong, and that's why he, like, titled it that, which is cool. Um, but that song is iconic and so good. Um, I have an Icky Trump shirt at home too, and on the back it says, "Want nothing better to do? Why don't you kick yourself out? You're an immigrant too." And I wear it proudly around my house. Which White Stripes song takes the perspective of a young boy who befriends a schoolgirl named Susie Lee? We're going to be friends. A, I love that song. Um, a fun fact: He actually made. Um, uh, we're gonna be friends a children's book and he was doing like a book tour like and he was like doing like a signing at the Grove um, and I waited in line for like an hour to try to go meet him and <laughs> they cut off the line like five people um, in front of me so I was like five people away from getting to meet him but I didn't get to meet him but it's okay um, maybe one day we'll meet we're going to be friends plays at the beginning of which 2004 comedy film centered around an awkward teen who has trouble fitting in a Napoleon Dynamite um, I watched that movie for the first time like a year and a half ago. It's not my humor, but um, you know, it, it like it having uh, I can tell that we're going to be friends at the beginning made up for me not you know resonating with the humor totally. Also, fun fact: I have so many fun facts with the White Stripes. They shot Napoleon Dynamite at the high school that I film um, High School Musical the musical series at. So it's a little little tidbit. Which White Stripes music video was? considered the most innovative of its time, as it was made entirely out of Legos. Oh, fell in love with a girl, right? See? So good. I also love that song. It's so good. That was one of the first songs I learned how to play on guitar. Um, on my like electric guitar. I was like so obsessed with Jack White's guitar, and so I like made my mom take me to guitar lessons so that I could like learn how to play all of his songs. I didn't learn how to play all of them. I learned how to play 
fell in love with a girl and like um, blue orchid, I think. The Seven Nation Army is how a young Jack White used to mispronounce which organization. Salvation Army, I think about this all the time. I literally will not call Salvation Army anything but Seven Nation Army. If like I'm ever going thrifting, I'm like, hey mom, you wanna go to Seven Nation Army? And she knows what I'm saying because Jack White takes precedence over everything in my life. Um, the, yeah, that's also like a really cool story and obviously like the most brilliant song ever made. I think it's the most iconic riff in history. The White Stripes come from which U.S. city? Detroit, baby. And um, yeah, he has a Third Man Records, like I think you can like like a like a factory for the vinyls up there too, which I really want to go visit. Meg White's drumming style is best described as which of the following? <laughs> These are funny suggestions. Latin. Meg didn't play the drums. Thrash. Minimalist. Minimalist. Definitely. Which is fantastic. Like. Jack always said that, um, Jack and Meg, I guess, said that it was like very like childish the way that she played the drums, which is so cool, and I think gave them that signature sound. Ooh, and the song Blue Orchid, what is the original color of the orchid before someone turned it blue? You took a white orchid, turned it blue. B. Obsessed with that song as well, and obsessed with the music video, so good. Name that album. Elephant, iconic album, best of all time, so good. White Blood Cells, I have both Elephant and White Blood Cells on vinyl, they're two of my favorite records of all time. Icky Thump, their last record, super iconic, some of my favorite tracks on that thing. Get Behind Me Satan. I love um, his mustache in this one. It's a, it's a good facial hair era for him. <laughs> the Nurse is on that album, which I really like. Oh, uh, My Doorbell is on that record, which is so good, such a bop. Yeah, My Doorbell is probably my favorite on that one. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Distill. It's like, there's like a J in it somewhere. But I think it's, um, it's a Dutch art movement, and Jack actually painted all of those um, like squares by himself in his garage. And um, the Dutch art movement was like uh, this like art movement that was centered around simplicity. And so they thought that was really cool because their music is obviously also you know very centered around simplicity. It's guitar, drums, vocals, um, and one of my favorite songs, which is Little Bird, is on this record. So good. Ah, I want to go and listen to it now. <laughs> All right, name that music video. I'm really nervous, okay. <laughs> oh, Seven Nation Army, of course. Such a good, such a good music video. That one's, that's my doorbell, right? Yay, okay, and there's like a bunch of kids in it. It's super cute. It's like all like 1930s, love it. Fell in love with the girl, which we talked about was the Lego thing, which is so cool. I wonder who made it. It's so good, I'll have to do research on it. Um, da, 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 it was a ray gun, and it was 1981. Oh, what's the song called? The hardest button to button, yeah. The hardest button to button, ah, 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 yes. Sorry, I didn't know the title of it, but I could sing it. <laughs> I love that song. That's actually, that's my mom and I's favorite song to sing together is the hardest button to button. Oh, uh, Blue Orchid. Or, yeah, Blue Orchid. <laughs> so good. Oh my God, and like the girl has like super like high heels in it and it's like so like ghoulish, ghastly looking, which I just love. It's like such a great aesthetic for them. Big Tim Burton vibes. Hell yeah! Oh my god, I'm so, that was so much fun. That was like so good. I wanna like go back and like listen to all of their records now. 
Um, yeah, I'm like proud of myself. I was so nervous because I was like, I'm the biggest White Stripes fan ever. And like, what if I didn't get them right? I was gonna be so sad. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. Uh, this has been Fanning Out with Olivia Rodrigo. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope I have officially proven myself as the biggest White Stripes fan.